All right, here you guys go. Uh, we got some sweep runs. Uh, we're still in break-in mode, but uh, you can see what it's going to make uh, before you uh, reach that designated amount of time to get out of break-in mode. So. Right here you can see we have a uh, pipe temp, engine temp. This is if it's seeing any knock. And this is the area right up top where I would assume that when it gets out of break-in mode, what we've seen before, uh, that will carry out a lot, a lot better because it has less fuel up there and you need to be lean to, to rev out. So let's look at, uh, brake specifics are fairly conservative for this Polaris motor. Uh, 610 while in break-in mode right here and it's making uh, 164.7 at 8,000, but that's going to come up when it gets out of break-in mode. Here's uh, run number two in a row. We're at uh, 163.4, and that's at 80.50, with its uh, peak torque at 7,900 to 8,000. Uh, once again, that there is extra fuel right now because we're still within that uh, fuel break-in window. So it's still making, even while in break in, 161.6 at 80.50. So, I mean, it's still making considerably more than the, the old uh, 800 did while it was out of break in, while it's still in break in. So that's a good indicator on this production sled. And we'll go into another one here. Here, we're uh, kind of hit the point where we balanced off uh, 161.7 at 8050, and it's making about 106 foot pounds of torque at 8,000. Uh, now, your brake specifics are uh, getting a little, little richer uh, 0.640 and It's uh, gradually getting richer as we go go up. So once we get out of break-in mode, we'll see that uh, drop down, and it's going to carry this RPM a lot better. So we're going to get a lot better shelf up top here. So uh, we'll do one more run just to show you. 
Uh, but that's going to be the end of it for while we're in break-in mode here. Now we can actually take the last uh, three runs here and overlay them. So you can see it's running pretty consistent. Uh, so a little deviation in the middle here, but that's just while the valves are opening and the and then dyno's loading a little different, but. Uh, the peak part up here, uh, very similar, they almost cover each other exactly, which is uh, what we like to see to know we're getting consistent dyno results. And the torque curve uh, looks very similar. We can also look at uh, the fuel curve. That's pressure, so let's actually... And it's following the pretty much the same strategy for fuel too. So uh, we're definitely at the point where everything's uh, accurate. And uh, that's it for now. So uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll show you uh, completely out of break-in mode. And uh, we'll also show you uh, interchanging mufflers and uh, what the pipe pressure is doing uh, and what the uh, exhaust temperature sensors doing so we can show you that our mufflers will make the uh, same power and the same uh, muffler heat sensor uh, value and uh, nothing will change by adding our muffler on so it'll run just like a stock machine and any performance part you put in with uh, the stock muffler will also be able to go in with our muffler and uh, you won't see any deviation in power so uh, that's it for now have a good day. Check out all our stuff at bikemanperformance.com.